Hi, I'm Chris Wardlaw for Car Gurus, and well, you can see what I'm reviewing this time around. A boring white van. Oh wait, you can't see it very well. Let me get out of the way. Ooh, it's a Mercedes, so fancy. This, ladies and gentlemen, is the new Mercedes-Benz Metris. It carries up to eight people, it holds 38 cubic feet of cargo in its trunk, and it starts at $33,495. Sounds interesting, doesn't it? Like maybe you could get a Mercedes instead of a Honda Odyssey, Kia Sedona, or Toyota Sienna. Well, you could. But as is true of many luxury vehicles, with the Metris, you're going to pay more for less. While the Metris's base price is eye-poppingly affordable, the thing you have to remember is that everything is optional on this van, and I mean everything. You want body color bumpers? Those are extra. Aluminum wheels? Extra. Cruise control? Extra. Power sliding side doors? Extra. Rear lift gate instead of barn style rear doors? Extra. By the time you add some infotainment features on here, leatherette seats, and a bunch of safety technology, my test van is running $44,000. Now that's right in line with a top shelf Odyssey or Sedona or Sienna, but that doesn't spell value to a lot of people. You can't get leather on this. You can't get a rear seat entertainment system. You can't get a lot of things. It doesn't matter how much money you have to spend either. This van is about function over form, accomplishment over accoutrements. The person who's most going to appreciate this on a personal use basis is the person who's been pining for a replacement of the classic VW microbus. All this thing needs is an option for a Westphalia conversion. Now one of the first things you're going to notice when you get inside a Metris, aside from how clunky the door sounds when it slams shut, is the preponderance of hard plastic in here. Remember, this is a commercial van. It's available in a cargo version, so it's designed for really easy cleanup and it's designed so that if you scratch it, nobody really cares. The good thing is that the gloss and grain here on the dashboard is fairly refined and it matches the gloss and grain here on the leatherette seats. Remember, it might look like leather, but it's not. Now, as far as front seat comfort is concerned, the front chairs sit up tall, high. You've got an outstanding view of the world and this steering wheel is really terrific to grip. Now there's really only one soft place to rest an elbow. It's not here. It's not here on this armrest. It's right here on this one. And the great thing is that when you buckle up, you move this up out of the way and then it returns to position when you put it back down. The Metris's controls require a period of acclimation. So for example, this is where you shift gears. You push this button for park, you push up for reverse, you push down for drive. Another problem is that your wipers are over here on the turn signal stock. Usually they're on this stock, so if you don't get used to how this works, you're gonna keep hitting this instead of this. Cruise controls are located on a separate stock. They're down here, but they're completely obscured by the steering wheel. So you can't even see which way to move it. It takes some practice to get used to how this vehicle works. Also, this infotainment system is really frustrating to me. It's got a USB port right here, which is great. And then there's this little shelf here where you can slide your smartphone while you're streaming music. Turning it on, adjusting volume is fairly easy to do. It's really a frustrating system to use. This isn't a touchscreen display. It's only 5.8 inches in diameter here. And uh, it's static. And, and it really was the most frustrating thing about driving this vehicle. Another problem is that the side mirrors are too wide and too low to provide decent visibility. Now thanks to the optional power sliding doors on both sides of the Metris, it's really easy to access the interior. Now the standard seating setup is just like you see here. Two middle row seats and then three positions in the third row. You can get an optional seat to go in this position one that tilts forward to make it easy for people to get into the third row. Now, just like the front seats, you sit up really nice and high in this vehicle. Great thigh support, plenty of room for legs and feet. Also, if you're a parent, 
I'll tell you, my daughter loved riding in this second or in this uh, second row center seat position because sitting here she could see completely out the windshield, which is not normal for her. No minivan can beat a Metris when it comes to third row seat access. Let's see how easy it is for a big guy like me to get back there. And once I'm back here, look how much space I have. I mean, it's no wonder that my new neighbor, the one with a gaggle of kids and an old Lincoln Navigator, took special interest in this vehicle when it showed up in my driveway. When you buy a Metris, you have three different rear door designs that you can choose from. Two of them are barn doors that open like this. The standard set stops here, the optional set swings all the way to the side, or you can get this optional rear lift gate. It's not power operated and it is huge, so you have to make sure you've got a lot of clearance between the van and anything that might be parked behind you. You also wanna make sure you're not gonna trip and stumble over anything that's behind the vehicle. Once you get it open, there's 38 cubic feet of cargo space here. And as an option, you can get a net that extends up to the ceiling so that you can stack suitcases all the way up to the roof. Now, how much space is there if you remove the third row and the second row seats? Mercedes doesn't say, and I think it's because these seats are so heavy and so bulky that they really don't intend for anybody to ever remove them. To get them out of there, you unlatch them, and you tilt them forward and then you have, you have to have at least two people to get them out of the van. I'm thinking that if you do bother to remove the seats, that the Metris is gonna carry more than a traditional minivan just based on the dimensions of the cargo van that shares this platform and body style. In any case, a traditional minivan is gonna give you more utility, more flexibility, and it's just better configured than this commercial van is. All right, let's go for a drive. So Mercedes equips the Metris with a four-cylinder engine, and it's not a diesel. It's actually a workhorse in the Mercedes lineup. It's a turbocharged two-liter gasoline four-cylinder. It's making 208 horsepower and 258 pound-feet of torque. Now, to be completely upfront and honest with you, I did not use the Metris in the way that it was intended. At most, I had myself, my wife, and my two kids aboard this vehicle at any given time, and I didn't load it up with cargo. But used as a substitute for a traditional minivan, the Metris did a fairly good job. I mean, it's quirky, but it was satisfying, especially in terms of the driving dynamics. This vehicle was engineered in Europe, and so it rewards the driver in certain ways when it comes to dynamic driving. I even ripped down Mulholland Highway in this thing and I didn't scare myself, too bad. In all sincerity, it really handled well. The turbocharged engine produces quick acceleration, but I missed the EPA fuel economy estimate by a mile. I only got 19.9 miles per gallon and that was the best figure I saw. The EPA says this van should be getting 22 miles per gallon. Now the one thing about the driving dynamics that I noticed the most was that Mercedes seems to have engineered this vehicle to provide the most comfortable and serene ride as possible for passengers. Now what I mean by that is the comfort tuned suspension, for example, absorbs every road irregularity that you come across. The van doesn't wallow at all, but it sure isn't delivering any impact harshness. Also, the way the brakes are calibrated, it's very linear. So when you step on the brakes, you have to push harder and harder and harder to get more and more braking capability. In a lot of cars, it's progressive, which means you don't have to push as hard to get maximum braking capability. And I think that the reason for that is because just as I just did, that type of calibration makes it really easy to bring this van to what's called a limo stop, which means you're not jostling the rear passengers. Overall, I found the Metris really surprisingly enjoyable to drive. Wind noise is a little bit of an issue, and when you drive over rough pavement, all the plastic in the interior kind of creates a symphony of rattles. But otherwise, I don't really have any complaints here. Mercedes did not design the Metris to compete with mainstream minivans. So it shouldn't be surprising at all that most people, most of the time, are going to be happier with something from Honda, Kia, or Toyota. 
Mercedes did design the Metris to compete with commercial vans, plugging a gap in the market with this midsize model, which is smaller than a Ford Transit and larger than a Ford Transit Connect. The problem, of course, is that you're still paying for that Mercedes badge. The fact is that a loaded Ford Transit in low roof, short wheelbase configuration costs less, is bigger, is more capable, and is offered with a greater array of options to custom tailor the van for specific purposes. So what's the opportunity with the Metris? Black car service, executive shuttle service, Uber Black. For a business owner specializing in these segments, a Metris is likely to be a more cost-effective alternative to the Cadillacs and Lincolns that currently dominate that market. As for personal use buyers, if you've been patiently waiting for a reimagined Volkswagen Microbus or Vanagon, your new ride is here. But it's got a three-pointed star in the grill instead of an oversized VW emblem. Be sure to check out my full review of the Metris on cargurus.com. Feel free to offer comments below. And if you found this review helpful, please share this video and subscribe to our YouTube channel. For all of us at CarGurus, thank you for watching. Yeah, this thing attracted a lot of attention this week. Oh, hey, check it out. That guy in that Odyssey is checking us out right now. Is that a plane? Yeah. Can you hear that okay? It's fine. It's fine? All right. Ready? Yep. Big bus. <laughs> All right. We're rolling. Okay.